Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dr. Robinson again, and this time we're going to continue with our studies, and we're going to talk about the Pythagorean theorem again. This time, part two, we are going to be finding a side. You remember the Pythagorean theorem, a squared equals b, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, but now we're finding a side instead of the hypotenuse, so the formula now is going to be c squared minus a squared equals b squared, or c squared minus b squared equals a squared, or we can even use hypotenuse squared minus leg squared will give us the other leg squared. So our sides are a leg, A stands for altitude or height, B leg, and that's the base or bottom leg, and those are the two that we're going to be finding. So the C is the hypotenuse. That's the most important side to find using the Pythagorean theorem, but sometimes we're going to be asked to find leg A and B. So this video is going to concentrate on finding leg A and B. We're going to take a look at the hypotenuse for a quick second just to identify it because that's going to be very important here. The hypotenuse is always found by being pointed at by the right angle. So it's being pointed at by the right angle. So it's the longest side out of all three sides of the right triangle. So you can always know that the right angle will be always pointing and it's opposite of the right angle so the hypotenuse is there so that's a good way in case they rotate your tri right triangle f in a strange manner all right so let's get to an example and find what we need to know so here's our first example find the value of question mark we have 10 feet 6 feet and a question mark first side I'm going to find is the hypotenuse. So if you remember, let's get our line tool back, the hypotenuse is located at the opposite of the right angle. So I notice they have our triangle turned backwards, so I'm still going to point at it. So my C side, or hypotenuse, is going to be 10 feet. So now that I know that, I'm going to get my formula. Here's my formula, c squared, e c squared minus a squared equals b squared, and I'm going to plug in 10 for the c. So here's my c, and here's my bottom down here. So my bottom is down here, and here's my a sign. So here's the bottom, and now you could use a question mark. So I'm going to replace C with 10 and A with 6, and that will equal to the bottom. So now I have 10 squared minus 6 squared equals B squared. So now it's just a matter of putting in the numbers. 10 squared would be 10 times 10, and 6 squared would be 6 times 6. So I'd have 100 minus 36 and that is equal to 64. So now the question I have to ask myself is b to the second power is equal to what? 4 equals question mark to the second power and let me just get my exponent. Now let's just put that to the second power. Okay. So 64 equals what to the second power? I know I could take the square root of 64. That would be quick, and that will give me the answer of 8. So my answer would be 8. Question mark would equal to 8. So that way I can check myself using 8 times 8 
plus 36 times 6 times 6 and see if that equals to 10 times 10 using the regular Pythagorean theorem. So leg squared equals hypotenuse squared minus leg squared was the other formula. And we're subtracting the hypotenuse, which is what we did, from the other leg, 100 minus 36 gave us 64, and we're looking for b squared, and that will give us a, uh, the square root of 64. So b squared will take the square root of both sides, as a matter of fact, that will equal to 8. So our answer would be 8. So this one was a little bit different from the regular a squared plus b squared equals c squared, whereas we weren't finding the hypotenuse, we were finding one of the legs this time. So we have to work a little bit backwards by subtracting. So now we're going to subtract this time. So here's a question for you to find the value of side A. So remember your formula. Plug it in. See if you can figure it out. And hopefully you'll have good success. If you understand it so far, great. If you're not sure, rewatch the videotape and go over it. You can even watch over the part one of this videotape, finding the hypotenuse. If you're still unsure, write down your questions and bring them in. I'll be glad to solve them for you. Here's another question. Find the value rounded to the nearest tenth. Oh, so sometimes it doesn't work out. Sometimes you got to round off your answer. Remember, check your answers. See if you got the correct answer. We'll discuss it in class. Write down your questions if you're unsure. Here's an interesting question. Tell whether the given side lengths form a right triangle. Yes or no? Well, we have 30, 40, and 45. If I remember correctly, earlier in the video, I said the longest side is the hypotenuse, C side. So the 45 would be the C and the other two would be the legs. So if it's a right triangle, the Pythagorean theorem will apply in this case. So I'd have to see if a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So let me get my calculator and see if that'll work. So let's type 30 squared plus 40 squared, let's see what that is equal to, 2,500. Now, let's see if that is equal to 45 squared, C squared, 45 squared, and let's see what, if that is equal. Oh, it does not equal. So it does not equal. So my answer is going to be no, it does not form a right triangle because it, the Pythagorean theorem doesn't work out in this case. So sorry. If it did, the answers would be equal, but they're not equal. So this is not going to form a right triangle because the Pythagorean theorem does not work. So when I multiplied 30 times 30 for side A, it gave me 900. 40 times 40 gave me 1,600. 45 times 45 gave me 2,025. When I added 900 and 1,600, they gave me 2,500, but it's not equal to 2,025, so it's not a right triangle. So sometimes you're going to be asked, without the drawing of a right triangle to see if it's still a, if the Pythagorean theorem still holds true if it's a right triangle. So here's one for you. Tell whether it's a right triangle or not. Again, you have to see your sides, which one's the longest, given 2.5, 6, and 6.5, and use your Pythagorean theorem. See if it's a right triangle or not. Good question. Check your understanding. See if you understand it so far. If you're uncertain, write down your questions. Bring them in. And what's next? The distance formula. So this is where we're going to conclude of our study 
of the Pythagorean Theorem. So I hope you got something out of it. Please tune in, like us on YouTube, and hopefully you'll get something out of these videos. This is Dr. Robinson signing off. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.